All right, guys, another episode, Junk Removal Made Simple by the Junk Removal Authority. Had a great day today, awesome day today. It's midnight on a uh, uh, Friday night. Um, I was out just a little while ago uh, with some friends watching the Duke Carolina game. We left before the game was over. Last I checked, a minute left in the game, and Carolina was up. It was against Duke, though, so you know telling what happened. But had a great day just uh, a few hours ago at night uh, on the phone uh, with a guy in California who's going to uh, let us manage his AdWords campaign. And we're super, super excited to see what we can really do to help blow his business up. He's pretty new to the junk removal business. He's been in business about a year. Uh, what I plan is after a few months, after all that business starts rolling in, is to actually have him join us on, uh, on a video we'll put it out on YouTube. Um, so uh, super, super, super excited to have the opportunity to really manage his campaign and leverage the $300,000 worth of mistakes we've made over six years. Maybe uh, uh, we can recoup a little bit of that money back while we just help just t tremendous numbers of junk removal businesses all throughout the country, all throughout the U.S. and Canada. Uh, really kick ass on AdWords, and uh, we built our business on AdWords. So I'm so, I just I'm rambling on here, but really, guys, I'm just I'm super super excited to be able to work with this guy and uh, see what we can do for his business. Today uh, on Junk Removal Made Simple, we're talking about vehicle selection. Um, that is something I get asked about quite often on JunkRemovalAuthority.com. Now that website sucks right now. We're building another. Well, I shouldn't say that. The guy that built it works for me. He did a good job for an amateur site. But uh, we've got it. We've got a, just a kick-ass website about to come up. But check out JunkRemovalAuthority.com right now. There is a blog post. Should be. I've written it. I believe it's on there. Uh, but I believe there's a blog post on vehicle selection that'll kind of uh, add some reading material to this uh, video right here. But we're gonna cover a blow out some stuff and uh, let's get rolling on it. Um, a lot of people wonder what type they can get. And what I mean by that is, should we go with a dump truck? A dump trailer and pickup. A dumpster truck, be like a roll off, a switch and go, a hook lift. And those are going to be your three serious options. Now, we started, remember there was nobody out here giving this kind of information. There, the YouTube was around when we started in 2011, obviously, but it was a lot smaller than it is now. And there wasn't a, a junk mob, there wasn't a junk removal authority, a junk removal university, a, a Dallas-Fort Worth junk removal. That was out here giving you all this great information for free. Um, the only option we had on getting information and running a junk removal business was to be in the position to purchase a Got Junk, College Hunks, junk, uh, well, junk Lugger's not, but uh, at the time, Got Junk, College Hunks, and Junk King were about the only serious franchises out there. Now there's about eight or ten of the damn things. But, um, uh, and, uh, you know, those franchises they ranged anywhere from 40000 to $115,000 for a franchise. And, I was the manager of a roller skating rink. I wasn't, I had $15,000 in my name. I'd raced, actually I doubt I even had that at that point. I'd raced um, circle track race cars for a couple years on NASCAR style race cars on some oval tracks. And uh, I ran out of money, sold the race car, got a little bit of money out of it. But uh, you know, for the most part, I was flat broke. So we started with a uh, two wheel drive, single cab, Chevy pickup truck with a trailer that was meant to haul ATVs. Guys, the walls on the side of that trailer were that 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 daggone tall. I mean, it was scary. I look back now and I shudder at the crap we did on that trailer. We we were as as, as big as we talk now, as far as is 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 refined and is and is I don't know, fancy is not the word, but just just uh, as professional as we are now, we were so damn unprofessional. We were more unprofessional than any of y'all could ever dream of being. That, that tra trailer, we would stack walls this high. Six by 12 trailer, walls this high. We would stack crap five foot high on that thing. I'd have racket straps running all different directions. And it wasn't a dump. So we hand loaded it and then we had to go to the dump. Actually, um, we had to go to the dump and, and hand unload. And I say the dump, we were actually using the citizens convenience centers. It's generally available just to the, the residential customers. Once we got a, a trailer, we, we, we thought we were in, uh, we thought we were extremely uh, well off when we bought a $1,200 6x12 trailer with three foot sides. 
And uh, at that point, we used to put signs on the side of that trailer, and um, it would say triangle removal. That was our name to start with, was triangle removal. And uh, we'd have nice polo shirts on and all like that, along with our khaki pants. And uh, we'd go on to job sites. And most people, you know, we didn't really show a lot of pictures of our truck and trailer set up, so they thought they were hiring, like, some got junk or something like that. We roll up and we were, I'm in a 2000, and by that time I'd wrecked my Chevy pickup. So I was in a 2004 F-150, we spent four grand on. We had a $1,200 trailer. And uh, we'd back up in people's driveways. They'd think they're expecting got junk, but we crammed as much stuff in there as we could. As soon as we left, the, left that house, the businesses weren't supposed to dump at this convenience center, just completely free. So we'd roll into a parking lot, we'd change shirts, and we'd take the signs off, and we'd go dump at those convenience centers. Just let the guys in there a little bit of money every so often so we could keep on going. So the only other option is just a regular trailer and a truck. And guys, you do what you got to do. You know? You do what you got to do. Then, of course, you could rent. You could rent like a U-Haul or something, which when you break down, that's what you need to do. Um, if, if money's tight, you can't have a backup truck, you need to already go ahead and get an account set up with a U-Haul or a Penske truck rental place budget or something like that to set up a uh, rental agreement. So when your truck breaks down, you can get a much better rate by going to rent a truck. So that's take write that down, put it on your to-do list, get it done. All right. Um, so let's talk about these different options here. Uh, well, I'm jumping around here. The other question that kind of goes along with it, used or new? So here's the deal on used or new. Buy new if you can. Start out anyway. If, if you're in a position where you've got enough money, you've got enough credit to purchase new, then buy new. Um, buy new you, yes, and uh, Get some, most, most any new vehicle is going to be reliable at least up to 100,000 miles now. So as long as it's halfway taken care of, it's reliable up to at least 100,000 miles. It should be beyond, but you're going to get at least 100,000 miles without having much trouble. Downtime is the killer in this business. You miss out on money. And rental, renting a truck is expensive. You have to hand unload generally unless you go rent an expensive dump truck. And it's just not very professional looking when you roll up. So buy new if you can, um, and we'll talk about new vehicles in, in a bit more detail a bit later. Used vehicles, again, we're going to go into a lot more detail on that too, but if you're going to buy a used vehicle, try and get two of them, uh, and try and get them relatively quick. If you can't buy them both at the same time, get the second one just as soon as you can so you have that backup option. And I'm not saying you should go out when you first start if, if you're tight on money, and purchase one used vehicle, and uh, then right after the bat, purchase another. If that run, if that uh, drains your tanks, if you run out of money by doing that, then don't go that route. Get your, everything started, get to the point where you're getting close to kind of filling up one truck, and then at that point start to look for that second truck. If uh, if you're going to partner with JRA get our, on getting our business package or AdWords management or any of our uh, support services, you're going to be getting so much business that you're going to need a second use truck or you're at least going to need a very reliable new truck. If you watch these videos and, and learn, you still should be able to be somewhat busy enough to, uh, to be able to support uh, you know, uh, uh, two use trucks fairly soon. So we'll, we'll break down these, these in, in just a bit. Now, our preference is a dump truck. Most of our expertise is a dump truck. We do own a dump trailer for our demolition work. We own a Bobcat and uh, we, load, we, we haul the Bobcat on that dump trailer and then it also allows us when we're on those jobs to use the dump trailer to dump um, uh, you know, construction debris and, and stuff from those demolition projects. So we do like our dump trailer. Uh, that's pulled by a 2017 or 18 um, F-250 Christian drives. Um, uh, I think it's badass, Larry edition, it's got all the bells and whistles, does everything but wipe your ass. Um, so that is, uh, that, that's a, um, uh, uh, we do use dump trailers. Dumpster trucks, we have owned a switch and go system. I do not recommend it. There are videos online, people love switch and goes. Switch and goes are hard to teach your team members how to use. Hell, I, I, fly, I fly a damn airplane, I'm an instrument rated pilot flying an airplane. And uh, that switch and go truck, you have to really look at it and get the angles lined up right and pulled up. Um, and, and that winch cable can mess up. And uh, there's too much that can go wrong. If it runs off the tracks, if you're uneven, there's too much that can go wrong. Um, I do not, do not recommend the switch and go system. The hook lift, and Paul Finger and, and several other companies make hook lifts. 
Um, I've never owned a hook lift truck, but I've seen them in operation. They're robust. Uh, they, they look very tough. I don't think you'll have very many issues with them. If you are going to go with a dumpster setup, then I recommend the hook lift uh, um, over, over the switch and go. The hook lift is more expensive. I can't remember how much more, but it's every bit of $5,000, $6,000 more. And it's also heavier. Um, the switch and go, and I could be off here. I think the switch and go weighs 800 pounds. If I'm off, I apologize, but I don't remember. I think the hook lift is closer to like 1,600 or 2,000 pounds. So you have to have a heavy duty or truck for sure. But these people that are screwing around, junk luggers and, and college hunk, uh, I might be. I think college hunks is still in NPRs. If, if college hunks is watching this video and they moved up to NRRs, I sincerely apologize. But I know Junk Luggers is running around with a switch and go system with an NPR truck. It's a 14.5 GVWR. My estimate is that truck with that uh, switch and go system empty weighs somewhere, that body they have, and, the, and then the uh, switch and go system, that thing weighs around 12,000, maybe just over pounds, give or take a few. And uh, that means they have 2,500 pounds before they're overweight. And uh, that means they're running overweight all the time. That's just barely, that's a ton and a half. Or that's not even a ton and a half, it's a ton and a quarter. So uh, that's ridiculous. That's, that's people being cheap. That's people being cheap is all it is. If you're going to get a dumpster truck, you definitely, and I recommend getting a, a higher GVWR truck anyway, but you definitely must have a higher GVWR uh, truck. And we're going to elaborate not only from staying legal, but also from, from a safety aspect and from a wear and tear on your vehicle aspect. I'll elaborate more on that in a bit. Um, a regular trailer slash truck, you do what you got to do, baby. You do what you got to do. I, 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 I love the years where we were rolling around in that truck because I get here and, and, and all these guys, uh, uh, you know, some people see, see, see me all dressed uh, dress nice and everything. There's a reason I do that, which I've talked about. And, and you know, I'm never on the truck anymore. And, and, and they think that, uh, you know, that, that all I know is like the franchise way. That that's, that, that's how we can operate is the franchise way. And that's not the case. We started with a... With a um, 3000 it was a $3,500 uh, Chevy two-door pickup truck, uh, and then I wrecked that. I pulled out in front of somebody while I was booking a job and uh, wrecked that, and um, then uh, bought a $4,000 uh, Ford F-150 pickup truck. That $4,000 truck probably made us $150,000 in sales, allowed us to get our first dump truck. And once you get that first dump truck, you, you, you just think it's the greatest thing in the world. And I was able to find a hell of a deal on that. It was in the middle of the recession, so I was able to buy a 2004 used got junk truck for $11,500 from a guy in Jacksonville, Florida. He uh, converted it over from a got junk truck to a chipper truck, so it has like this unique roof on it, which is pretty damn cool as hell. We thought we were gonna cut the thing off, but it's pretty damn cool. And um, uh, anyway, so we were off the races on that, and that one truck, we're still running now, old number one, it's got 330,000 miles on it, with the exception of a fuel pump, has never had any major issue wrong with it at all. And uh, fuel pump, and that particular truck, that's the 4H E1 engine, that was uh, model, your model's 2000, I can't remember the first year, but it's, uh, the last year was 2004, and I think it was like 98, 99, somewhere there, as they started that 4H E1, hell of an engine. But the fuel pump is mechanical. It's like 4500 bucks or something for the fuel pump. Ridiculous. But that damn truck right there has probably made us... How long we had that truck? We had that truck four years. Uh, you figure each truck we have makes around $200,000 a year in revenue. So that truck's made us about eight hundred grand. That's $11,500 investment. Freaking crazy. So uh, anyway, I love old number one. She smokes a little right now. She don't grow up about 60 miles an hour. We get calls... Fairly often, hey, your, your truck, yeah, your truck's just billowing smoke, and uh, we'll say, ah, we'll look into it. But in, anyway, uh, she's she's keep, she's still going. She's still going. We're gonna go. We're gonna go go till she blows up. The engine blows up, and then we're gonna stick another one in there and keep right on rolling with old number one. But um, uh, where the hell were we? Uh, so you do what you have to do in this regular trailer and truck, and then you just get the hell out of this. Just as dag on quick as you can to get up into either a dump truck or dump trailer. Um, again, we recommend dump trucks, uh, or I haven't even shared that yet. I'm, I, I, this has been such a good day. I'm so damn excited. I'm jumping all over the place. Um, dump trucks is what we recommend. We recommend a low cab Ford truck or a cab over truck. Um, I guess the official definition is LCF, low cab Ford. The reason we recommend, that, that's like the flat ones. That's like your got junks, your college hunks, your junk luggers, the flat roof, not roof, the flat, uh, front, you know, whatever, and uh, the reason we recommend those trucks is they're so maneuverable. And what you, what you have to remember is you're going to have inexperienced drivers driving these things. 
Um, if you uh, if you go to a dump truck and trailer or dump trailer and uh, like a pickup truck, you are limiting your uh, the, the people you can hire, and they're going to be tearing stuff up, knocking people's mail back boxes over. Even in, in a maneuverable truck like this, people are going to get stuck, tear up people's yards from time to time, hit mailboxes, and all kinds of crazy crazy crap. Uh, it's only going to happen a lot, lot, lot more than this. Um, and, and even in tight areas, there's sometimes you can bring these, these low-cap four trucks in areas that, that's very difficult to get like a 16-foot dump trailer and, and um, uh, pickup truck uh, back there. If you are going to go the dump trailer route, I do recommend a gooseneck. Uh, they're much more maneuverable in tight spaces and it raises your load carrying capability up tremendously. And they're a hell of a lot harder for some dude to jack when, they're, when you've got it on uh, some steel or whatever when you got it sitting in your lot. So, Goosenecks recommend if you're going to go this route. Um, if you already have a pickup truck, again, it depends on how your, your, your funds are. If you already have a pickup truck um, and you can afford a dump trailer, you can buy good, decent, used dump trailers for like four grand, somewhere in that, that range. New ones are going to be about nine. So um, that's, that's pretty good. And I, I say four grand. You're probably not going to need a decent one for four. You're probably going to need more like five or six. You might be able to find a damn deal. A five or six figure on a dump trailer. If you already got a pickup, that's that's hard to argue with. So unless you're going to be working on your business right from the start and on, and on the truck very little, that's hard to argue with. And uh, you know if you're going to be on the truck for a while, that's a, that's a good move. That's a good move right there for sure. You just got to be got to be careful. You know you're going to have to set some of the same limitations on, on maneuverability sometimes, but the majority of jobs you'll be able to do with a dump trailer and pickup if you know how to back where the dam and if you're careful. Um, dumpster truck. Uh, one, one of the, I don't know if you noticed my, my verbiage when I was talking about we, we had a dumpster truck we no longer do. I hated that damn switch and go. I hope they don't sue me for libel, libel or whatever, but um, it, it's just, a, it's just a, it's a bad system. It's a cheap system. It's thinking cheap. What do we always say? If you, if you think cheap on your expense end, you're going to think cheap on your income end. Switch and go is cheap, and that's what it is. It's cheap. Um, but uh, we, we got rid of it because uh, it was just, you know, um, the other issue we had... If you're going to have these dumpster trucks, it's more expensive, but put a tarp, and, and Junk Luggers does this, put a tarp on each of your bins, not on the truck. So what we did, again, you have inexperienced drivers like we were talking about on the dump trailer. What we did is we put, we mounted the tarp to the frame. So we had, you know, you had these long beams that came out in the side of each uh, truck, and then there was an automatic tarp with these really long arms, and then, you know, you'd, you'd hit the button and it would lower down over the, uh, over the bed. The problem was, again, with inexperienced drivers, is they'd leave the tarp down, they'd raise the bed up, and they'd bend the shit out of the, uh, out of the, uh, the arms. And it was like 1500 bucks to fix it or something like that, depending on how bad it was. You had to replace the arms, you had to fix the weld. So after like the third time after I replaced that tarp, I, I said, just, we, we were already having issues with the switch and go, we hated the thing. And um, at that time, uh, we, we needed to sell, sell a truck anyway. We had a huge workers' comp payment we were going to make, so we just figured we'd sell it and we'd buy another one once everything recovered because we already had we had some big things in the works at that point. So um, we sold that truck, got rid of it. Um, offering dumpsters is, is a good thing. When you're first starting, I probably probably wouldn't. wouldn't you don't need to be going into too many directions at the, for, at, at the start, but after you've been in operation a while, you've got people in place and junk removal is running smoothly, you've got a nice, tra a nice trajectory of growth on junk removal. Uh, you've been working with JRA, we've been blowing you up on AdWords management or whatever. Um, then at that point, you can look into dumpster stuff, but please, just, just go with a hook lift truck. Um, yeah, they make dumpster trailers too. I'm not an expert on them. Um, I know, uh, I believe, I think Dallas Fort Worth, uh, the junk guy's down there, I believe he, he uses some, and I don't know if he talks about them in his videos or not, but um, anyway, it's a neat concept. Again, it comes back to the whole thing that you're going to have team members sitting there trying to back this massive heavy thing in people's driveways. Um, one thing I, I do like that, that a lot of people are doing are actually renting out dump trailers. They are more expensive. They're easier to steal because uh, generally it's too expensive almost to rent out a, a, a gooseneck dump trailer. So you're going to probably have a tag along dump trailer if you're renting them out. And um, the nice thing though is they're so easy on driveways. Um, and, and one of the things you always got to worry about on dumpsters is, is uh, digging into a driveway. Um, you can look up, I'm going to put this here, been there, dump that. Very cool business. It's a franchise. Um, been there, dump that. 
has got this unique system. I think it is used boards or something like that. But anyway, they, they have a system where uh, they say it's, dam it's damage-free to your driveway. But um, uh, asphalt, I've replaced a driveway twice. Um, we had two separate trucks just randomly get uh, an oil leak on a brand new driveway. Couldn't get it cleaned up. So we actually had to tear up the driveway and put it down with like 6000 bucks and driveway freaking replacement. So and I don't think uh, insurance... Uh, this is the Bobcat. It was the Bobcat that blew a hydraulic line on one of them. And then the other one was a section. It wasn't too expensive. It was just one part of section of the driveway that one of our trucks had just randomly. That What happened is the dipstick, the little O-ring on the top of the dipstick uh, was messed up. The guys had taken a turn a little fast. The oil had sloshed up. It was actually dripping off that dipstick. And it was like, it, was, it still was over. It was over our insurance, uh, it was less than our insurance deductible, bumped right up on it. The other one, we blew that hydraulic line, and they they hadn't realized it. Man, it, it put hydraulic fluid up and down the driveway, and it was several thousand. I don't know the exact expense. It was several thousand dollars cost us to replace that entire brand new driveway. Embarrassing as hell too. Um, so um, look up in there, dump that. It's a pretty neat, neat system uh, for sure. And, and neat, I think it's a pretty neat business model. They, they, they specialize in mini bins. So these are your, are your choices. Um, I recommend the dump truck every day. Every single day, seven days a week. Um, recommend the dump truck, low cab Ford. Low cab Ford. And the Isuzu's, you see a lot of Mitsubishi's, I don't, uh, the Fuso's, I'm, I'm not very familiar with them, but um, I know the Isuzu's, Isuzu's are pretty good trucks if you know what you're looking for. So, um, the gas or diesel. So everything we own is diesel, and you can check a Suzu's literature. I think it's something like if you're going to drive more than 15,000 miles a year, the um, increased longevity and, and the better fuel mileage, a slightly better fuel mileage on the diesel, start saving you money. I think it's 15,000, somewhere thereabouts, 15,000, maybe 20,000 miles. Uh, if you're going to drive more than that, diesel truck pays off. Um, generally, it depends on your area uh, and how spread out your area is, but for example, our Raleigh trucks uh, put about 800 miles a week on, on each of our trucks. So um, you're going to hit, and and before we had as many trucks as we do, it was like 1,000 a, a week. So we put like over 50,000 miles a year on uh, on our vehicles. So, and it just depends on how spread out your area is. But diesel is generally what I recommend. Um, the uh, They got a lot of good torque, got plenty of power. The Isuzu trucks, and any of these diesel trucks, they have plenty of engine. Your limitation is going to be in the suspension as far as how much weight you can haul. So uh, and that's what we'll talk about in a bit. The key is whatever you go with, either gas or diesel, have all of them be the same. And the reason for that, if you don't, is you're going to have drivers putting gas in your diesel engines and diesel in your gas engines all the time. Uh, we've had that happen three times and put gas into a diesel. And we've looked out each and every time. We've drained out the, drain, replaced the fuel filters, drained out all the fuel out of the tank and just uh, filled it up with diesel and we're able to get everything primed back up, cranked up and it ran no problem. Actually, on old number one, it happened recently. I think it started running better after getting a little gas in it. but. Um, for the most part, you can seriously mess up an engine. An engine on these trucks is sixty-five hundred bucks, so you definitely, definitely, definitely don't want to do that. Um, if there is an advantage to the gas, and the Isuzu gas trucks are good, they're they're, they're peppy. I, I haven't driven one, but I've been told they're very, very peppy. Um, they drive completely different. The diesels are are, are st they're pretty quick, but it's, it's a lot more gradual. This thing right here, I supposed to I supposed to the gas MBR is supposed to have real kind of jumpy gas pedal. It's supposed to be kind of fun to drive, really. But um, and the advantage to gas is most team members are used to putting gas in their vehicles. So that's for sure a, a, a big time benefit. Um, the, uh, and then if you have somebody that has a diesel vehicle, normally they're a bit more mechanically inclined and they're not going to screw up and place uh, diesel in a, in a gas vehicle. So that, that, is, that certainly is an advantage. Um, the other slight advantage on the Isuzu gas trucks is all it is is a Chevy like Vortec engine. So um, 6.0 liter, I think. I could be off there. I think it's 6.0. And uh, all those parts are so readily available. The Suzu parts for the diesel uh, are a bit harder to come by, and they're more expensive. So um, 
Uh, a lot of that depends on are you going to be doing the work on your own uh, or are you going to be getting a shop to do work. Um, we do all of our maintenance in-house. We do all of our routine stuff. I have some guys that work with us on the junk trucks that do our routine maintenance. And then we've got a mechanic uh, that we use all the time as well. So whatever you do though, just keep them all the same. Don't, don't, don't mix and match, you'll be having all kinds of headaches. Okay, if you're gonna use a used truck, you've got a couple options. You can buy a used got junk truck, a used college junk truck, or a used junk king truck. The junking trucks you rarely, rarely see, um, and I don't know why, uh, but you rarely, rarely see a junk king truck. So you're normally going to be between the college hunks truck and the got junk truck. I recommend the got junk truck for a couple reasons. Um, number one, the got junk trucks are lighter. got junk trucks on the market so you want to be able to try and buy the same type of truck we have we own one old college hunks truck the problem with college hunks trucks is they're sending them heavy they're overbuilt they need to be on the nrr frame uh, they're on a 14.5 gvwr frame they need to be on a 19.5 gvwr frame so that's the main problem um, when uh, you are looking to buy a used Isuzu got junk truck buy and I, my mechanic's gonna kill me if I get this wrong, but by between 2005 to 2007, four HK1. That's the engine, four HK1. If you're gonna get a diesel, I don't know as much about the gas engine is not a crit, it's critical. But the reason we say by between 2005 and 2007 is the four HK1 was a daggone good engine. And um, the, uh, uh, in the 2005, make sure it's a 4HK1, because it, it, I think they made some years, especially in the GMC, that was the 4HE1. I'm not 100% positive, but I believe there's a few years in uh, 2005 that had the 4HE1 engine. Still a good engine, but a bit more expensive to work on, um, and, and less power, too. The 2008s and newer, and if I, I'm off by a year, I'm pretty sure it was 2008. I know the 2007s were good. So the 2008s and later, I uh, started getting the diesel particulate filters and the um, uh, diesel exhaust fluid systems, uh, the later mod models. The, in particular, 2008 to I believe 2011 were just the DPF filters and they were very, very, very troublesome. Um, and the 2012 models when they started getting the diesel exhaust fluid and the, the DEF system on the Isuzu's is pretty good, um, but it is another headache. The problem with the, the system, the, the DPF cleaning system and the DEF system on the Isuzu's is you have to let that cycle run through. So do some research on it, but it will actually put the truck, if, if for some reason the, the, uh, you're, not, the, you're not driving quick enough on the highway for it to automatically do a regen, and then the driver, remember you got inexperienced drivers like we were talking about up here. Um, and the driver does not, uh, if it gives that final warning and the driver doesn't pull over and do a, a manual regen, and that can take like a half hour. So that's a half hour you're paying guys just to sit around while the truck does its thing. That's a half hour you could miss your landfill that closes. That's a half hour you could be late to your next job. So there's a bit, they're a bit of a pain um, if you don't do a whole lot of highway driving. If you do highway driving, they should do the auto regen you'll be Okay, on the Isuzu trucks, uh, when you're buying used, um, Find it, you look, find them right now as of, as of the time of this recording. Uh, you can find about 100,000 mile used got junk trucks, somewhere around 20 to 25,000 in decent condition. Um, you can maybe even be able to find them a bit less if you're not in a hurry to buy. The problem is, is generally you don't buy a truck until you absolutely have to have one. That's one of the reasons we recommended like earlier to try and buy a bit soon. 
Um, but if you wait the last possible minute, you're not going to be as flexible on price, so you're probably going to wind up paying a bit more. But again, uh, 20 to 25 will get you a decent unit, somewhere around 100,000 miles. When uh, it's running, just listen to the engine, and, and you need to listen to some Isuzu 4HK1 engines because they do sound different. But if there's a bunch of gear train noise, I mean, it's loud. If you hear like a lot of clack, 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 clack. Uh, before I bought a Suzu truck, I bought that. It sounded weird to me. Um, and that truck lasted like 30,000 miles before the engine went out on it. And it, you know, that truck only had like 130,000 miles when we bought it. The truck came out of Texas. And it was just a bad buy. Something some screwed up on that truck. I don't know if they had been doing oil changes or what, but something was messed up on it. Normally, the Suzu engines are good for 300,000 miles up and plus. They say 310 is the overall time. We have one with like 330, 340 on it. So uh, it's low on power, but it's still getting the job done, runs 60 miles an hour, smokes oil. Um, but about 300,000 miles on the engine. Uh, to, you note know this, uh, somewhere around 230,000 miles, the transmission is going to go out. Auto transmissions last about 230. Um, a lot of times, the transmission on those trucks is about five grand. It's going to cost you about 1,200 bucks to put it in. So it's going to be about $6,200. Check, put a new transmission. We've done junkyard transmissions in the past and, and had pretty good luck. So, you know, the key is how many miles is on it. So, if you, hopefully, you can figure out how many miles, what truck it came off of, how many miles. Uh, Greens use truck parts in Fremont, North Carolina, is a pretty good um, outfit. They do ship parts. A little harder to deal with. Uh, I tell you, a good company is Busby Truck Parts in South Carolina. They ship parts all, all throughout the country and they're very, very organized. So, Busby Truck Parts in South Carolina. Is good for used got uh, used Isuzu parts. The problem with transmission is the shipping is going to be several hundred dollars to ship a transmission. But it's still, uh, you buy a junkyard transmission for fifteen hundred bucks. So if you get one with thirty, forty thousand miles on it or less, it's out of a wrecked truck. Then you got a, you got a winner there. That's that's a good that's a good uh, good deal. It's a good transmission. That ASIN transmission is a good transmission. It just goes out about two two twenty, two thirty, two forty somewhere in there. You're gonna lose that transmission. Um, the trucks will occasionally have electrical issue or have some sort of sensor go off and put it in a limp mode. It's very, very slow when it goes in that limp mode. It's just, you know, you, and you just got to plug in the computer and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, the uh, only use a Suzu brand fuel filters. Don't use the, the fleet value, their discount filters either that they recommend. Use a, a Suzu brand filter. It's like an aluminum canister filter and um, it'll say a Suzu on it. Those are the only filters you use. They filter the best, and, and the fuel systems are susceptible to rust. The fuel tanks in these trucks rust. If that rust gets up in your injectors and your fuel lines, uh, it's like four or five grand to replace. So what happens? Uh, that can be that can, it. What can happen? It's called the fuel. Called the fuel, it can cause the fuel pump to come apart. We had that happen. We had we're losing injectors on one of these trucks. It was that truck one? We wound up putting like two sets of injectors in it. And then we realized uh, when we started having another issue, we're like, what, what, what's going on? The fuel pump was still working, but it was coming apart. It was throwing metal up into all those lines and then the injectors and everything. And uh, it was super expensive to fix. You know, we had like almost $10,000 of repairs in that truck. I told y'all wrong about truck one. It would have been, it would have been uh, about $5,000 of repairs, but we put two sets of injectors. And injectors were like 400 bucks each. For that particular truck, they're cheap on the 4HK1. The 4HK1 injectors are like 250 each, um, but that pump was just throwing metal into the system. It contaminated those fuel lines. All the fuel lines forward of that pump had to be replaced, as well as the injectors. It was very expensive. Um, so uh, always, just, if you have uh, injectors going out on these trucks, uh, be a little leery. You could have an issue with the fuel pump. Um, so, if you can swing the new truck. Um, what we recommend on a new truck is a, a Suzu NRR with a JRA truck body. So we can coordinate with the dealer uh, or you can use our dealer. Um, there are advantages to both. One, our dealer is very familiar with, with this body, can guide you through the process, no problem. Um, if you have a local dealer nearby you want to use, sometimes I can help out. If you're going to get maintenance done in a dealership, sometimes I can help out. You, you tend to get a lot better treatment from maintenance facilities when you use, um, when you buy their truck, the truck through that facility. Even if you use like a national, like MHC, Kenworth, and Isuzu, um, if you don't, even if you buy, we, that's, that's our dealer. So we use MHC, 
And if you buy it through us, um, there's some advantages to that. But the problem is, is you could lose the advantage at your MHC or your local Suzu dealer on getting good treatment, getting fast treatment on getting your trucks fixed. And that can be an issue. Some of these places, they tell you the trucks can be down three, four days. That's the reason if you work on stuff in house, that's the way to go. Um, but get a new truck, get an NRR body that's a 19,500 GBWR. Now you're gonna pay somewhere around four grand more for an NRR over an NPR. Um, but the NRR truck, one, you're gonna be legal most of the time. You're not gonna over, over you're not gonna really hardly ever uh, put the NRR overweight. Um, so and it's a lot safer. Um, because it has larger brakes and, 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 and heavier duty suspension, it's made to haul more weight. The Isuzu NPR trucks, we've had them overloaded. And man, that front end just feels like it's hopping up off the ground a little and every, the brakes don't work nearly as good. And it's just, it, it's not a comfortable feeling. It's easy to overload those trucks, especially if you're like junk luggers putting on a dag on switch and go. Um, so it's a little tough. That's a little tough uh, doing that. Go to the NR, don't be cheap, get the NR. Um, and uh, the other advantage of the NRR is, is, is uh, brakes last a lot longer. So on the NPR trucks, you're going to be putting brakes on it about every 50,000 miles. On the NRR trucks, you're about every 100,000. That's front brake pads, 100,000 miles on those N NRR trucks. Um, JRA body is an awesome body. It's well built. Uh, it's got a large toolbox up front. It's got flat sides to really put your graphics. It's a superior body. It's, it, it's better constructed and a superior body to the got jump body. It weighs more. You don't want to put a JRA body on an NPR truck. Matter of fact, we won't sell you one. If you try and give us money for a JRA body and you're going to have us installed on an NPR truck, we're going to tell you we're not going to do it. Uh, you're not going to be happy with it, and we're not going to do anything that we know our, cu that our customers aren't going to be happy about. So that's the way to go, though. Um, you know, or with a JRA body, if you can swing it. Now, this setup right here, um, truck, uh, you know, this JRA body is 20 grand. The uh, NOR, trying to think the last one we bought, I mean, that's about, a, I think it's about a $75,000 combination, I believe, give or take a little. Just, just look up the price of the, the NOR and then add 20 grand to it. That would be the cost of the JRA body. Now, JRA body, this could be going up with the tariff, steel tariffs going in place. I saw something today, I think, I don't know how exactly it's going to affect it, because I know Canada is excluded. We get a lot of our steel, the United States imports a lot of the steel from Canada. Um, so uh, we'd have to check with our supplier to see if, uh, if, if, if prices are going to be going up because of this tariff. Um, and I just, I don't, I, don't, I don't keep up with the bodies enough to, to know that for certain. Um, oh, the other advantage you know, is tires. Your tires are larger. Um, so, and, and they're tougher. We hardly ever get a nail in an NRR tire. We get nails weekly in NPR tires. We're always uh, plugging tires and patching tires on the NPR trucks. The NRR trucks hardly ever take any debris at all. It's just a, it's a, it must be a harder tire. You fill up to 110 pounds too, so it's just a harder tire, holds more air pressure, and it's harder to, for that debris and all to penetrate. And, and that's gonna be something you're, fight, you're fighting all the time. So, um, this is the breakdown on, on your vehicle selection. Now this is very selective. I'm, I'm, I'm going to encourage everybody to go with a dump truck as soon as you can. Uh, low cab Ford. Buy new if possible. Buy multiple used if not. Um, and uh, it's just a, uh, uh, there's a lot of options here. You can always visit junkmovealauthority.com, read my blog post. Hopefully you're taking notes as you went because I feel like we just blew out a lot of information. A lot of good information on uh, uh, truck selection and vehicle selection. Um, remember, uh, Junk Removal Authority is your source for uh, uh, starting, growing, and expanding, or starting managing and expanding your junk removal business. We're here with uh, AdWords Management. That's what we're pushing hard now. We have, we have a lot of interest in it. We've got a guy out of California just started some AdWords Management today. Um, uh, we got great pricing on it, flat rates, not dependent on your budget. So, I mean, we want you to have every job you get from AdWords, we want you to want to be profitable. And uh, we're going to work, uh, work to make that happen. We're gonna, you'll, you will book up more jobs uh, from the internet than you've ever booked before. Um, AdWords is, is the way people find information right now. It's expensive, it's scary as hell. Uh, make sure you watch my video on AdWords management, it's scary as hell. But uh, you got to be doing it if you want to be a serious player. Uh, we've got full websites um, right now on sale, $5,000. $5, uh, check out junkdrs.com. You're going to get a replica of that site adjusted for your company colors. 
the content adjusted for SEO uh, representing your particular city. Uh, it'll have book online now features and it's, uh, it's been tested to, to convert. So when, when our AdWords brings customers to your site, it's going to convert that into a call and a sale. And also, especially if you work with the business package, we'll teach you how to, how to make sure you close a deal on the phone. Um, and uh, of course, our call center, uh, the ultimate in flexibility for your drug removal business. You can use our call center, send us any missed calls. We answer it in your business name. We got a way of knowing uh, where the call comes from. We answer it in your business name. Um, and we can do after hours, we can do um, uh, holidays, and uh, anytime you miss a call or we can take every single call you want, it's $20 per book job, I'll be charged. So if it doesn't convert into work for you, we don't charge anything. If it converts into a job, it's $20 per book job. Um, I, uh, I just want to know this, but there's a breakdown we've done on how many jobs you would need um, before it's really worth hiring somebody else to answer your phone. You're going to pay them $40,000, $50,000. I could do the math in my head if I wanted to right now. You're going to pay a secretary forty grand, depending on your area of the country. So. Call center is a great option. It's what I'm excited about. I'm hoping it did that. I'm hoping the call center really blows up and gets really, really popular. So uh, we can make it 24/7. I don't have to worry about answering my cell phone anymore on after, on, on after after hours calls. So um, anyway, uh, appreciate everybody for joining us. I hope you got some great information. You can always call me 919-466-9322. Um, uh, JumpingRoofAuthority.com. I know my the JRA Facebook page and my Facebook page isn't quite as active as it needs to be, but 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 it'll get that way. Follow me on Facebook at Lee Godbold. I am on Twitter, very inactive. I'm on LinkedIn. Check me out. Uh, send me a message. PM me. Um, if you want any consulting calls, uh, consulting calls you can schedule it kind of on retainer, $150 an hour. So just let us know if you're looking for any consulting work um, with me and. Uh, you know, you just call me up 15, 20 minutes at a time. We can talk for an hour, two hours. We'll get scheduled right. So uh, just, just let us know. I promise you, if you schedule a $150 an hour call with me, you're going to gain a lot more than $150 in value. I guarantee it. So, all right. Uh, it's about probably 1 a.m. Hey, Siri. What's the UNC basketball score? North Carolina edge Duke in the battle of Tobacco Road by a score of 74 to 60. Look at that, the old baby blue going to the ACC final. So it's uh, 1248. I'm ready to get to bed. I hope y'all enjoy this information. I enjoyed it bringing it to you. And we'll see you tomorrow.